Good morning. Hi, Diamond. Good morning. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm just so happy it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> We're on vacation, so I can't complain too much, but... Oh, where did you go? To Denver. Oh, that's nice. Allison Wapit is in Denver right now. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know why she's there. I just know that she was going to Denver. <laughs> so I don't know what she's there for. Yeah, Alex's brother lives here, and we found a weekend that worked for both of us. So we're like, let's just do it. Yeah, that's cool. Love that. I need to get out of my apartment at some point. Just don't know when. Yes. Hey, Mike, how's it going? It's good. It's good. Glad, again, yeah, glad it's Friday. I know. You always look so professional with that headset on. <laughs> I feel quite robotic, but yes, yeah, it's, it's sturdy. Yeah. So that's what you look for in a headset, right? <laughs> hey, not not going to budge. Marissa, you look lovely. Good morning. Thank you. It has all the colors on the spectrum. See there? Oh, I pretty, love that. pretty. <laughs> I love a good, bright color palette. Right? <laughs> How's everybody doing? You know, we were just talking about how we're glad it's Friday. So I'm not it's sure, does long... your job, do you do work on the weekends, given that you're kind of going into people's homes and doing things? I figured. Yes, it's seven days a week, so. Yeah. It's been tough with the kids being virtual, though. So we're week two, two different devices, two different grades, two different schedules, and it's mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> Yeah, a friend of mine has four kids, so she, yeah, she's got a, no. they're four, seven, eight, and ten, so they're all doing, like, varying degrees of things, and she said, like, their lunch times are confusing, so, like, one kid eats lunch at 10, the other kid eats lunch at, like, 11, 15, based on, like, their school schedule, so she's like, I just am feeding kids all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine eat me out of house and home. So I'm like, <laughs> go to school, please. Oh yeah, Carrie's got a grown son who I'm sure like eats his fair share. Of. Yeah, we've got, uh, my husband is half Samoan. And if you know anything about them, they, they're big yeah. and they like food. Yeah. So it's just like, <laughs> it's just bottomless over here. I love that. Oh, all right, Mike, it's all you. I'm going to let folks in and then we're going to start promptly at nine. We have one community here today, so we'll start right at nine, but I'll let you kind of go from here as I start letting people in. Oh, cool. I'm going to post our icebreaker question in the chat. We're talking about absolute dream job. So, you know, we aren't worried about finances. We aren't worried about feeding everyone. Um, this is strictly, you know, the work you'd be doing and, and, you know, what that, what that looks like. And so I'm curious, I don't have a great answer for this one. I think all of mine are pretty generic, everything I've thought of. So I'm curious, anybody has an absolute dream job, epitome of, of what they'd be doing on a day-to-day -day basis? I mean, I'll tell you that I would have be doing one of two things. The first one is I'm not pandering to you, Marissa. It's I would be designing other people's homes and spending their money, um, <laughs> which is kind of more of a realistic thing, a goal that I actually do have. But the second would be I would be on Broadway. I'd be singing on Broadway. It'd be a blast. Okay, so we can take skills that maybe we don't have yeah. and then say we have them? Oh, well, okay. That's yeah. a game changer. Would you be like LeBron? <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> clearly. I'd be all in the bubble. Hey, but actually, I, I can kind of sing, Mike. I'm not a terrible singer. Well, no. <laughs> well, see, that's I, 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 did, I did say maybe, you know, up our existing skills a little bit, you know? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can, I can hit a three. You know, I'm, I could probably go three for 10, you know? Oh, 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 I'm, I'm, oh, not you know, you're not muted. Yeah, no, no, that was, that was everyone heard that. So, okay. Okay. That's where 10. we're at this morning. Friday Step morning. Game it's up. Hot. Step game up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about absolute dream jobs. Anybody have a, a job that comes to mind for them? So this is not practical at all. But uh, if I had my way and could start over completely, I would take care of pandas in a panda sanctuary. There you go. Right? Have you ever seen those where they're like climbing over baskets and just running amok in their adorable <laughs> panda ways? Yeah. yeah. 
I would, do, I would love that. Do pandas bite though? I feel like they might be aggressive. Is that true? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, as much as any other animal possibly, but. In Carrie's dream job, they don't. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, yeah. In, in the YouTube clips that you see, no, no, of course not. It's, it's all, it's all just snuggles and, and all, all the goodness. Um, I think a lot of people, I, I've, I've brought this up to people just throughout the week, and a lot of people mentioned animals, like in, in some vein or another. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if that's just something like as you get older, you, you appreciate animals more or, or what it is. I mean, this um, is my daily life. Do you not see that there's a 15 pound cat in my lap? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no personal space at all. To- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolute dream job. You can take on any skill learn any language, anything you need to do? Well, I would say mine is underwater photographer, potentially like National Geographic. If anybody knows Paul Nicklin, he's like a famous National Geographic photographer who does yeah. some underwater stuff, that sort of thing, traveling around and doing photography and scuba diving. Very cool. Have yeah, you- traveling for work. That reminds yeah. me, I've not seen this yet, but I've seen it all over the internet. This like man who photographs the octopus underwater. Has nobody else seen this? It's like my octopus friend or teacher or something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That's like immediately what I think of. It's just like taking photos of an octopus. But... He, like, he like hands him a jar with something in it and he opens, the octopus opens the jar. Yeah. They're so smart. Wow. But that's, that's what's a little horrifying. In my opinion. <laughs> I, I guess that's sort of an animal one too if you're photographing marine life mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 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 exactly the the travel aspect though yeah that's that that's extremely appealing um maybe not right now yeah but generally <laughs> well right yeah yeah right the ocean feels safe right now though i feel like that might be the only safe place to be yeah it's i was gonna go there part. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna go there. I was like, well, not many people down there. Uh but <laughs> but also getting there. Yeah, there's 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 that whole That's the tricky part. part of it being my dream job is that we don't live on the ocean here. So <laughs> Yeah. The most landlocked probably in the entire US, yeah. It's pretty muddy trying to shoot <laughs> photos underwater here. I bet. I bet. Yeah. So we're talking about Absolute dream job. I put it in the chat. If anybody is is you know doesn't want to speak up, I can I can let the world know about your dream job via chat as well. Um, but yeah, anything anything you want to do? Think back to when you were when you were a kid and all optimistic. Who's got something for us? This isn't that exciting, but I think I would just want to be a teacher without like parents or administrators or annoying. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Pets. Just, just <laughs> it maybe it's a big ask, but that's what I'd want. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, that's first of all, that is exciting. Secondly, I like I like what we're doing here. We're bringing in different aspects. We're talking about ideal scenarios. No, this is this is good stuff. Max, I like what you're saying, teacher of pets, like a dog trainer or something. You know, you're not going to get any you're not going to get any clap back or anything like that. So there's, there's maybe, maybe we can collaborate here. We can take pictures of training octopi, octopi. Is that I what? Think yeah. Right. I don't think it's, I'm not going to try the other plural option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that. It's too early. It's too early for anything like that. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> you put me in charge of this. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Dream okay. jobs. Jeremy, you got some? Uh, my dream job is to be an NBA general manager. Uh, uh, I don't know if uh, fans on here, but that is, for some reason, it's one of those jobs that I just assume I could do really well. There's like literally only 30 people in the world that do it, but I'm like, I think I could probably do that if I had to. Um, you know, just natural hubris i guess job i don't understand i'm sure i could do it yeah do you uh do you do like fantasy and stuff because i hear that that's kind of like the equivalent in it in a, to an extent no no 
Yeah. Second like question for you, because I got yeah. some shade for this earlier. Say you're shooting, you know, 10 threes. How many are you making? Me personally? Yeah. I'm going to go with uh, uh, game, game threes or like in my driveway threes. <laughs> I'm going to say game threes, three and a half. Driveway oh, okay. Three, four and a half. Got you by We're a doing half. a little over under. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. 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 yeah, I said three. Yeah, I'm just trying to be realistic here. I do like, have a uh, warm up. One of my fun facts. Yeah, you're coming in cold. I, I walked on, or I tried out as a walk on at Mizzou uh, in the Quinn Snyder era, which was kind of the uh, the like wild, uh, the wild west. Yeah, of that was back in 2002. <laughs> yeah, I got cut in less than an hour, but I did get to play on the court. You were there. Minutes. There you go. That actually brings up a good point. I did always want to be Truman the Tiger. I always wanted to be the mascot. I always thought that was yeah. something I could do. I wouldn't say that's a dream job because it seems extremely uncomfortable. But it's never too late, man. You, you know what, man? Follow you're right. Your dreams. See, this is why this is why I come to these things, man. I need inspiration <laughs> I have, like that. I have a follow up question about the GM in the NBA. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. in the Last Dance documentary, was the yeah. short, squatty guy Jerry the GM? Oh, squatty. That's my dream job. Okay. Yep. Just making sure That's I understand. That's Jeremy. <laughs> he was really well liked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Lucky. Right. laughs> Maybe that's why I feel like I could do his job better than him. Oh my goodness. I assume he's dead. Is that right? Because he wasn't like interviewed for the no, I think he's very alive. Just oh. nobody wanted to hear from him. Okay. So I, yeah. Maybe that guy. <laughs> he probably assumed he wasn't going to be shown in the best light. So he's like, I'm just going to let, let them do their thing. We do have some things here in the chat. Thank you all for, Abby, thank you for clarifying Octopus's hope. Wants to write a novel and have a dog rescue on the side. That's, that does sound like the dream. Right. Can only yeah. only hope. No pun intended. I was. I mean, come on. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it, Mike. Write a novel. What would your novel? I mean, what what are we what are we talking about here? Is this like a mystery thing? Is it like a romance thing? What what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm trying to work it out, but it would definitely definitely be fiction. I'm trying to figure it out. Like trying to figure it out, as in for this conversation, or really trying to figure it out. No, I'm really trying to figure it oh, out. Oh, yeah. Follow those dreams. I like that. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm that's trying. awesome. We'll yeah, see. That's great. We'll see. How's the dog uh, rescue have... coming along? Well, you know my husband, so <laughs> not well. But he says we need a much larger home to to have a dog rescue, which I guess he's right. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we can start one by one. <laughs> I really one just want to buy one. a bunch of land and then like have like a, a farm of dogs and then maybe expand and then create like a, a bar where you can bring your dogs and put them like in a dog park while you have drinks and snacks yeah. and play together. So, you know, diversification. Absolutely. That's good. I like it. I like it. It's like bark bar or something. Yeah, they have something like that, but you know, mine will be better. So, of course, yeah. <laughs> oh man! So yeah, we're talking dream jobs here. Uh, we've gotten we've gotten quite quite an array of different things. Does anybody have have a dream job they want to share? I can do this all day. I can Craig, share. yeah. Uh, I have always wanted to be a film director. Yeah? Yep. I still plan on moving out to Los Angeles in 12 years. Ten. Yeah, there you go. Prince Doing Bailey goes to college, 2032. <laughs> <Happening>. <laughs> now, I have to ask, I, I've never understood the difference between a director and, like, a producer. So what does a director do? Like, what does that day-to-day -day look like? Or, like, on the set, I guess. Director makes all the decisions. And they make all the decisions for like from casting to like how a, uh, a scene is shot and like directing the actors on like what to do. 
Well, what does the producer do then? They got to have some the producer power, gives right? all the money. Hey. Yeah. Hey. What? Hey. That's all a producer does? That's the executive producers, yeah. Yeah. They collect. Oh, gee. There's also producers that like organize the getting like the locations ironed out and stuff like that. They help with that stuff. Oh, yeah, man. they help with some decisions, but it's mainly bankrolling and making sure the wow. things that they're bankrolling are things they like. Dang. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I did not. I thought they played a much more integral role. Well, I mean, that is important. Money is important, but. Like for example, okay. like Reese Witherspoon produces a lot of things now. It's because she has a production company. So she picks things that she likes and then her company basically foots the bill for um, like little fires everywhere. Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're essentially like an investor. You're like, I think this one's going to hit. So let's, yeah, let's make it. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. That just changed you your cloud to get the actors on board that you want to. Ah, yeah, yeah, That's sure. Probably to like Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt still have plan B together, even after their divorce, which I think is cool. Yeah. But I think with their names, they can get better talent. Right, right. That makes probably sense. Probably less money just based on being in that inner circle. Maybe. Right, yeah, just yeah. do me a favor. Right, like yeah. Clooney, you know. That's what he does all the time, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, last minute dream jobs. I've got, a, I've got a question for Craig. Oh yeah. Do you have a um, like philosophy on child actors? <laughs> I've heard like director directors like have to have like a child actor philosophy. <laughs> I've, I've heard uh, a few people talk about it. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't really heard that. <laughs> Do you ever listen to uh, Brian Koppelman? Do you know that name? Mm -mm. He's a he's a showrunner. He, um, I think he's written and directed a little bit, but he's um, he does Billions, and then he did like the Ocean's Eleven and Twelve and Thirteen movies, all those. But mm -hmm. he's like very anti child actors, which is really interesting. So he'll like kind of swap out uh, actors like in a in a TV show just so like no kid has to be on the set for more than like a couple days a year. I don't know. Huh. I think that's interesting. Apparently the, the Macaulay Culkin era didn't turn out so well. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, all the stories I know of like famous child actors are always like awful and traumatic. So I'm sure it's not that great. So if I ever become a director, I'll make sure to take care of any child actors that's my philosophy you heard it here first you guys <laughs> dream job dream job right there that's great all right are we are we ready to go yeah we're ready to roll cool all right we're gonna run through this month's announcements and then we'll get to our community share and then we'll hand it off to marissa um, so, I mean, it's pretty obvious. This is where we are this morning. We're at Creative Mornings. Um, you are joining our local Columbia chapter. Um, so if you're not following us on all of these social channels yet, um, give us a follow. This is where you find all the information about um, each month's events. Um, and hopefully at some point when we are able to meet in person in, you know, 2022 or whenever the time comes, we'll do a lot of other events outside of um, just monthly things. But, um, I have a lot of ideas, just things we're not able to execute on quite yet, but give us a follow if you want all the latest updates. And just as a reminder, um, Creative Mornings is supported by um, companies that give a damn. That's a big part of our uh, manifesto, just companies with heart and, and companies that champion creativity. And those for us are WordPress, MailChimp, and Basecamp. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with how Creative Mornings works, uh, WordPress, MailChimp, and Basecamp um, so, financially support our global team that is based in Brooklyn. There's about 10 folks on that team. So that team is funded through these sponsors. Um, we don't receive um, financial funding from these folks, um, but we do get access to the 10 people at the global office um, as regular support, which is amazing. Um, we do have local sponsors that help us put on our events um, when they will cost money at some point when we're back in person. But um, for now, let's run through these global sponsors. Um, MailChimp is, let me get my announcements up here. MailChimp is our official partner for marketing. Um, this month, the promotion 
is um, Hello Sunshine and MailChimp. So we were talking about Reese Witherspoon just a second ago. Hello Sunshine is her production company. So she's working with MailChimp to present um, a virtual, um, oh, hang on folks, we got people coming in. Sorry guys, um, the way that Zoom is set up now, I have to like let each individual person in. Okay, apologies guys. This is the worst part about doing these Zoom events. Um, so Hello Sunshine and MailChimp present Bookshook. It's a series where powerful women discuss the books that um, move them or change their lives. And so there's three episodes up right now with Reese Witherspoon, Jamila Jamil, and Yara Shahidi. So you should all be familiar with those three um, kick-ass women. Um, so those episodes are really cool. It's a virtual literary festival. And so there are a couple episodes up for you to look at. Um, so I would recommend giving that a shot if you've got some spare time. Um, also, WordPress is our Creative Mornings official global partner for web publishing. I feel like most of us are familiar with WordPress. Um, they have an Own Your Content series up right now. It's season three of the series they've been running. Um, so they, this um, series features artist and educator Jen Hewitt as well as Company of One author Paul Jarvis as a part of a special field trip series. So you can check out their interviews and learn about how to overcome perfection, digital privacy, and finding out ways to be quote unquote enough. Um, I think this is really interesting. The first couple of seasons of this series is really cool. So if you're interested in kind of talking more about those particular issues, I would recommend giving it a shot. Um, also, just want to say like in this time, it's a lot of companies like our three sponsors have done a really good job of putting out just digital content for folks to interact with. So we're all home. We're not doing a whole lot of external social activities. I just would recommend uh, learning something along the way. So it's pretty cool to check this stuff out. Um, and most of these things are free to us, um, if not offered at a discount just for being a part of Creative Morning. So um, our last sponsor here is Basecamp. They're our newest sponsor as well. So they're our official partner for project management. Um, our friends over at Basecamp have launched a new product called Hey. I actually downloaded this this morning. I'm gonna check this out this afternoon. I've been really curious. So it's a new way to organize your email um, into different feeds, into different categories. It's really different than any other app I've ever seen. And it's also just bright and colorful, which I really appreciate. So if you're interested in integrating this into your Gmail or your Outlook, um, I would recommend giving that a shot. Um, you can just go to hey.com and it should give you all the information that you need. Um, and then moving on to our local sponsors again, we don't really take advantage of what our local sponsors offer right now because we're all virtual, but I always want to give these four um, sponsors a shout out because they have supported us from the very beginning when nobody in Columbia knew what Creative Mornings was except for me and a host of five or six other people and they've been really supportive. So at some point we will be able to take advantage of um, Camacho coffee um, when we're having coffee and breakfast again together. Uh, Cosmic Sauce is our video agency. So Jill, who's on our planning team, um, would be heading this effort up and would record all of our meetings in person. Um, right now, Zoom is our video partner. Uh, Vervosity, um, a dean over at Vervosity reached out and offered to pay for our coffee. So at some point, whenever you do get a cup of Camacho, you will also reap the benefits of it being free because Vervosity has offered to pay for all that. For us, which is pretty amazing. And then Equipment Share is our breakfast sponsor. So we'll at one point be able to um, reap that benefit and be eating donuts and bagels together. Can you guys tell that I'm really excited about meeting together at some point? <laughs> I'm just over Zoom, man. Um, field trips. So field trips is a really cool part of Creative Mornings. They do virtual field trips now. Prior to being virtual, we would do like local field trips where we would maybe go to a local design studio or um, a local theater company or something like that and go as a team and be able to get a kind of a behind the scenes look at something creative that's happening in our community. Right now, we, we're not able to do that. But what's cool about this is that virtual field trips exist, which means you could go to a design studio in Barcelona if you wanted to, um, because everything is virtual. I know that uh, several members of our team have been a part of these and have been really, uh, have given lots of really good feedback. So if you're interested in doing one of these field trips, they're pretty easy to access similarly to the way you signed up today. You just sign up, you get a link, and then you're able to participate. Um, I know Mike and I think maybe Kayla has also done a few of these too. So they're pretty cool if you haven't had a chance to check those out. 
And then again, it's always encouraging for me to see what's happening all over the world, just as a reminder that we're all in this together and that this is a, a global thing that we're all experiencing, but knowing that 215 chapters of Creative Mornings all over the world in various languages are meeting together one Friday a month in 67 different countries, over 20,000 people. There are already over 8,000 talks online. If you miss something along the way, or if there's something in Paris that you're really interested in checking out or in Dallas and their chapter, like all of these videos are online for you to access for free. It's the coolest part about Creative Mornings is that it's always free to you. So um, I would recommend if you're looking for a little spark of creativity is just check out some of this stuff. And then also it's just a reminder that we're, we're kind of all in this together. So, um, <clears throat> Before we move on to the manifesto, I wanted to, um, I'm going to stop this share. Before we move on to that and then introducing uh, Marissa as our main speaker, I wanted to give um, one of our local community members, Courtney, um, an opportunity to tell us a little bit about um, how her experience and her current role at the Thompson Center um, represents the monthly theme of spectrum. I know that that spectrum could really um, represent a lot of different things to different people, but we wanted to shine a light on what she's doing and give her a chance to share a little bit about that. So Courtney, I'm going to hand it off to you if you wouldn't mind uh, telling us about um, your role at the Thompson Center and then, you know, whatever else you'd like to share about the monthly theme. Great, thank you so much for having me today. Sure. Um, like Lindsay said, my name's Courtney. I am a, a licensed board certified behavior analyst at the Thompson Center. Um, and one of my many roles is that I am uh, the coordinator for our Autism Friendly Business Program. Uh, that program provides uh, free training for businesses in Columbia and nationwide on how to support customers that might have autism, and then also how to hire individuals with autism. Um, and so uh, it's really important, obviously, to be able to support a customer base of people with autism. Uh, families with autism, especially in our community, make up a huge percentage of the population just because we have the University of Missouri here and we have a, a center like the Thompson Center. Um, word of mouth is really important. And so if you own a business that is supportive of those with uh, different diversities, then um, that's obviously not only just good to be a good human, but also a great business practice. The other part of that um, program is hiring those individuals who have autism. Um, a lot of individuals with autism, certainly not all, uh, tend to be very creative. Um, and they like to do things like graphic design or drawing or computer work. And so um, getting those individuals employment experiences is, is really key. Individuals with autism, especially those with um, at or above average IQ, really have some pretty poor outcomes when we look at employment and quality of life. A lot of them are um, still living in, in their parents' basement, living at home. They aren't able to secure a job because maybe they bomb an interview because their social skills are bad but that doesn't mean that they're not a great employee and it doesn't mean they can't, they don't have those skills to be successful. So uh, that's a huge part of our program. We also do a lot of consulting with businesses on how to um, set up your office so that it's friendly for people who come in with different uh, diverse needs. So whether that's choosing paint colors or lighting, uh, how to make um, sensory sounds more appealing, things like that, um, that's something that we do as well. So if you ever have any questions about um, how you can support customers that you work with who might have autism, or if you're interested in looking at that employment piece of how um, you can be an employer of someone with autism, feel free to reach out to me. Um, again, it's all free through a grant that we get through the state. Um, and then we do do promotion on our end. We put you on our website and you get some promotional um, items so that the community can know that you've um, made a decision to be a leader in diversity in our city. Courtney, I have a follow-up for you. Is yeah. what, do, what do we mean when we say autism spectrum? Like, what does yeah. that necessarily mean? I think I kind of understand, but I, I don't. So I would love for folks to kind of have a better idea of what we mean when we, when we use those words. Sure. So um, autism spectrum disorder is the official name that we call autism. Uh, you maybe hear people say ASD. You may hear people say autism. You might have heard the word Asperger's before. And we're talking about the same thing. Um, the DSM, the Di Diagnostic and Statistical Manual is how you diagnose autism. And that's changed in the last couple of years. And so if you've ever watched Big Bang, you might've seen Sheldon and he would be what we would classify as Asperger's. So he's really smart, but he's really socially awkward. Um, now we don't have that diagnosis anymore. Everyone just gets an autism diagnosis. And so when we say autism spectrum disorder, um, we call it a spectrum because 
individuals with autism look so different. And so we typically say, once you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. Because you could have someone with autism who is nonverbal. Maybe they have um, aggressive behavior. Maybe they um, need help with toileting, personal safety, just kind of navigating their environment. Then you could have someone who also has autism, who has at or above average IQ, who can talk to you and I, and you might not even know they have autism speaking to them. We have quite a few individuals on the MU campus who have autism, who haven't disclosed their diagnosis, and really no one would know. Um, autism is um, a lot of times a hidden disability. And so unless someone discloses um, that they have autism or you notice the symptoms of autism and you see them struggling in those areas, um, you wouldn't necessarily know that they have a diagnosis. Great. Great Very question. Cool. Does anyone else have any questions for Courtney about um, her role at the Thompson Center or just about the autism spectrum, what we're discussing in general before we move on? I think it's on the chat. Someone asked for my contact info. So Lindsay, feel free to share that. Um, yes. Email is usually the best way to get a hold of me. Yes, so Miranda's been going to be gathering anybody who's um, wanting to share their information with the team or if you're looking for something or someone to partner with, all that goes in the chat. Miranda will collect that along the way, so we'll send that out to folks. But um, Courtney, what does your kind of day-to-day -day look like at the Thompson Center? I'm kind of curious as to what, what that looks like for you. Yeah, I'm sure like you guys, there's never a day that's the same. Um, so Autism Friendly Business is one of my big projects that I coordinate. Mm -hmm. I'm also the coordinator of a program called Strive. Um, and that is for college students who have autism, who maybe aren't sure why they're at college or have picked a major that maybe doesn't translate to real life, or they're trying to decide if college is the right track. We work on communication and social skills and employment skills so that by the time they're out of our program, they either have secured employment or they're um, making steps to living independently, something like that. So we do that three days a week, we teach a class for them. And then we also have a grant through the state called TEAM, Training Experts in Autism in Missouri. And so we um, train people like you, we train educators, parents um, on what autism is and different strategies and things like that. Very cool. I just think the work that you do is really um, inspiring and really encouraging. So we really, really appreciate what you're doing. Um, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to stick them in the chat or reach out to Courtney directly. Um, but just love hearing about what you're doing. I do have one last question before yeah. we move on. Um, and it's more like, forgive my insensitivity if this sounds no, like, I'm always like, I want to say this the right way, but also have a really genuine question. So yeah. I'm saying like someone's um, autistic, um, mm -hmm. is it the assumption that someone doesn't like, I don't want to say there's, they they have a problem, but some people don't like get better. Like it's not an illness that we're trying to improve. Is it a feature of someone's personality or who they are just as a person? They're fully whole and a, a whole person, but what is the goal? Is it to help, um, folks cope with the things that they're dealing with or is it to help others understand them i think i get like a little tripped up with trying to figure out are we trying to fix someone or are we yeah. trying to help them better because i think my my fear is like i don't want to say we're trying to help people fit in because we mm -hmm. don't necessarily want people to fit in we right we encourage those diverse um personality traits and things about them that make them who they are but also does this make sense like what what do yeah. we what do we mean when we're kind of talking about integrating people into workplaces and, and doing certain things? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so when we talk about people with autism, um, we usually also say, and I'm glad you brought this up and people say it all the time, but instead of calling people autistic, um, we typically say people with autism. And that's okay. because just exactly what you said, they are a person first, just like you wouldn't say like, hey, glasses, right? Because that's just a little part of your identity. And so we say people with autism because they are a person first. Um, and autism is not a mental health disorder. So it's what we call a neurodevelopmental disorder, which means it occurs at birth or early on in ut utero or in development. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like anything else, like you and I, we all have goals, we all have things we want to improve about ourselves. and same with people with autism. So for those that are on the spectrum who are more impacted by autism, meaning their symptoms are more severe, um, it's going to look like teaching them communication skills um, so that they can have their wants and needs understood. That is a basic human right for all of us, right? We want people to understand what we need. We want people to 
to know if we're sick or we need help. So we, um, that's a priority. We want to make sure that kids and individuals have a way to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, Safety is huge. So we want to teach that. And then social skills. We really focus a lot on social skills because that's, uh, we know the ability con to connect with other people is um, a huge part of quality of life. And so we're constantly teaching those skills. Um, for young kids who are more impacted, we kind of teach those and they're not necessarily, they can't necessarily tell us that they wanna work on that, but those are the things that we focus on. For individuals who are maybe less impacted, who you might not know have autism, um, we teach those same skills, it just looks differently. So for them, we know um, young adults with autism have a really high rate of anxiety, uh, they're at an increased risk for depression and suicide. And so teaching those social skills, giving them um, a place where they feel like they belong, helping with conversation skills, um, teaching what we call like the hidden curriculum. So you and I know all these social things like guys, if you're in a bathroom, you don't go stand right next to the other guy in the urinal if there's lots of choices, right? Like that's awkward. Or if you go to a movie theater, you don't sit right next to the one other person in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Things that people would say like, that's strange, that's weird. And that might prevent them from kind of navigating life. Those are the skills that we teach for people on the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. And we do say we, sometimes you might hear people say uh, high functioning and low functioning. Um, and that's just when people say that they're talking about low functioning, meaning uh, below average IQ or people with autism who also have an intellectual disability and high functioning people typically are referring to people with at or above average IQ. Um, but we t try to stay away from that. I like to just say more impacted or less impacted um, because even if you have an at or above average IQ, um, and you're high functioning, you still have a lot of difficulties. They just look a lot different than someone who maybe um, has more severe autism. This is fascinating. I'm actually really curious to learn more about this. Um, <laughs> yes, I could do a whole day. <laughs> Would can you I, just like can I ask Courtney a question? Yes, absolutely, Marissa. Go I ahead. I was just going to ask you with the work that you do, where did that passion come from? Like, how did you get into this line of work? Yeah, great question. So um, I have my um, bachelor's degree and master's degree from the university in social work. Um, and then I went on to become a board certified behavior analyst, some additional graduate work. Um, and I've always been interested in helping people. I wanted to be a teacher, I thought, growing up. And then I got into social work and um, had my first experience working with a little boy with autism my freshman year of college. And so I kind of just went on from that. I didn't even know BCBA is kind of like an, a growing field. So I didn't even know that was an option until um, I had that experience, but yeah. Thank you so much, Courtney. If you wouldn't mind in the chat, like if there are um, a, a link with resources or anything else people could check out along the way, I'd love to include yeah. that in our packet at the end of the, end of the event, but I really do appreciate you being here. I, with the theme being spectrum, it just means so much to so many different folks. I thought it was really important to um, kind of highlight what you're doing in that space. Um, so do appreciate you being here. Um, hope that you can join us for future events as well. Yeah. So um, everyone give Courtney a little virtual high five. Or <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna move on to our main um, speaker, so for Marissa. But before we do that, um, as a reminder, we always like to read the Creative Mornings Manifesto before we start, just as a reminder for everyone um, who we are and what we stand for. This month, I have asked our lovely Diamond to read the uh, manifesto for us. So Diamond, if you are here, I think you got kicked out a second ago, but I hope you're back. If you wouldn't mind reading the manifesto for us, we'll go from there. Is she here? I am. There you are. I know you got kicked out, so go ahead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you, and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections, in learning from others, in hugs and high fives. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. Excellent, thank you so much, Diamond. Um, and with that in mind, um, oh, sorry guys, I keep getting folks who are coming in late. 
Um, what I'd like to do is have um, Carrie do an introduction to Marissa, who is our speaker today in the theme of spectrum. So Carrie, if you wouldn't mind introing Marissa, and then I will pop this screen out. And then if you want to have um, Marissa's kind of face um, nice in the forefront for you, there's an option to do a speaker view so you can see her up close and personal and that colorful ward like wardrobe she's got on, which fits really well with the theme today. Um, but Carrie, I'm going to kick it off to you and then we'll go from there. Absolutely. So one of the great things about the Creative Morning themes, as you guys have probably noticed, is how many different ways you can take them. Uh, the difficult thing about the Creative Morning themes when you're trying to identify speakers is how many different ways you can take them. So when we were brainstorming Spectrum, we thought about light, we thought about color, we thought about a range of histories and experiences. And how do you narrow down a theme like Spectrum? Well, when we found Marissa, we realized we didn't have to. Uh, Marissa is an interior designer and owner of the Whitley Co., a full service design studio in Columbia, Missouri, and she creates beautiful spaces for her clients, um, emphasizing function and implementing organization. Um, but speaking of a range of experiences before embarking on her formal interior design career, Marissa won the Miss Teen USA, USA pageant in 2001. She was a VJ uh, with MTV and she served sushi in Hollywood. So uh, with that, I'm going to go feel inadequate and uh, turn it over to Marissa. Good morning. Don't feel inadequate. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I haven't done this, so I just need to share my screen. Is that right? Okay. Desktop one. Let's see here. Let's see. Yeah, when I click share screen. There should be a, a box that pops up and allows you to decide which, um, you know, which window you want to share. Okay. Let's see here. Zoom is a tricky beast, so <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> share the keynote. I'll say if you guys have not seen the SNL skit around Zoom, that they did early in the summer about people using Zoom, this is what always makes me giggle. Isn't it? I know. Okay, so <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. This comes up. It's got desktop one. So then you also have to click like the blue share button. Yeah, the there's bottom. a share button at the bottom right. Okay, and then it says open system preferences. Oh. Privacy. So if you haven't set up Zoom yet, um, you may have to restart Zoom in order to. to if you have that. a deck that you would like to um, share, if you want to email it to Carrie or myself, we can um, do the share screen for you, if that would be oh. easier for you. Uh, send it to Lindsay because I haven't set up my preferences either. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am sending it now. Which email did you send that to by chance? <laughs> I have okay. about 500 email inboxes. So. At Influence & Co. Oh, great. That should be coming up. Oh, great. I got it. Okay. Let me, if you want to keep, we'll go ahead and start talking about that. Up. Okay. All right. Let me get back to this screen with you guys. Sorry about that. That's all right. Okay. So I have music on there. I don't know. I, I bit off more than I could chew, I think. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Yeah. So if you do the... Perfect. Just giving it a second to load here. There we go. The pictures. Okay, awesome. And so you have to, if you just want to continue to click, I will catch up with you. Um, 
So like Carrie said, spectrum is one of those themes that I was pretty um, overwhelmed originally at the thought of, but um, going back to before I was an interior designer, it really made sense that all of us have a wide array of identities and who we are that make us who we become. And I started um, kind of going back and it was very therapeutic during this time to really kind of take a look at why I chose interior design and how that um, discovery of self uh, created the love of design. And so this is the spectrum of self, the spectrum of design and the spectrum of life for me. So my name is Marissa Whitley Tago. I'm the owner of the Whitley Co here in Columbia. And we do everything from major remodels to custom built homes, but my identity started here. So uh, I was born to a, an African-American father and a Caucasian mother, so I am biracial. Um, I am a daughter, a sister, an orphan. I'm adopted. Uh, I was a student. I'm a student of life. I'm a friend, an athlete, a musician. I became a role model. I've always been a dreamer. I, took me to a lot of places, so I'm very uh, nomadic in nature. I am now a mother, a wife, and an entrepreneur. So this is my identity. So the far left picture is my family. I was raised by a single mother, Carolyn, um, the youngest of four, and um, when I was three, my mother passed away. So I moved to Missouri. I was adopted by my aunt, which is the picture to the right. That was on her wedding day. And my identity was forever changed. So going from Champaign, Illinois, where a lot of kids look like me, to Springfield, Missouri, where no one looked like me, um, I knew that I was different. And it really was something that allowed me to harness um, an innate ability to try to find common ground with people. I, I discovered that I, I wanted to help people and I loved that feeling of gratification that I got from that high of like, yes, they need me. And that approval that came from that connection that I got. So, um, you know, being that I look different and my family dynamic was different really was, um, a benefit to me, which I didn't really realize until I moved out and, and saw the, the broader world um, around me where other people look like me. Um, and I learned a multitude of lessons on the street that I grew up on. I grew up on uh, Mimosa. 2001 was my address and 2001 became a very kind of symbolic year for me uh, with growth and winning my pageant. Uh, graduating high school, moving to New York. So it just, um, it's pretty cool that all of that culminated into um, my upbringing. The photo uh, above my street name is really symbolic because the, the woman in the middle actually, in a weird way, brought me to my husband and to my children. So I put on a garage sale for her, being of service, um, after moving back from LA. Uh, she was moving after 54 years in her house. She's known me since I was six. And I put on a garage sale. A young woman came to that garage sale that went to high school with my husband. We were at the mall one morning. They saw each other. My husband was on leave from the Navy. And that's how I met my husband. So if I wouldn't have done that garage sale for her, I wouldn't have met that girl who introduced me to my husband. So my love of design started from the woman on the right in that picture, Beth Richard. We're in front of her house and she was my lifelong employer um, and friend and mentor. And everything that I know about design came from her. And so um, it really is a really pretty cool picture that we got um, because everything about the Whitley Co is really kind of summed up on this page. I grew up playing sports everything about what I bring to the table, um, the challenge of creating a space for someone is 
very much uh, the same mentality that I had as an athlete. So just wanting to do the best that I can and being able to collaborate with my clients. But, you know, I was a, I was a workhorse. I got a trophy for it. So I, I try to instill that same amount of uh, work ethic into um, each and every one of my clients and designs, no matter what the project or the budget um, or the style. So the, the athlete in me is really a, a, a solid foundation. So I had to put that in there. So I won't read all of this, but I wanna say that out of um, loss and uncertainty, the thing that I realized I could control was myself. So, you know, I couldn't control um, losing my mother. I couldn't control having my siblings separated relocating to Missouri, having people that, that didn't look like me or um, get me, but I, I knew that I could control myself. And so uh, like Creative Mornings um, manifesto, it's like I believed in giving a damn, and no matter if it was school or sports or uh, you know music, I played cello. I, I wanted to do the best I could do every day. And so I, I really got that no matter what happened to you, the reaction that you had to what what was going on was detrimental and and really could allow you to grow from those experiences and so um, that I think helped my mindset um, in moving forward and I always had a very entrepreneurial spirit and growing up on mimosa everyone around me was um, retired and at the time I thought oh gosh you know, I'm one of three kids, but as I continue to knock on their door and sell them my latest fundraiser, they would open up and then they would invite me in their house and they would share stories um, about their family and um, serving overseas and um, losing children and all of these things. And so my love of design started by just listening, listening to my neighbors, um, their life, um, and then it kind of grew uh, to me helping them. And so like light itself, you know, people's energy is seen and it's felt. And I always wanted to try to be there um, and be a light to them in their day. A lot of them didn't have family. So I kind of became a surrogate grandkid to them, which was great. And so I think with Spectrum being the theme, everything in my life makes, makes that um, theme a viable theme for me because of my experiences. So this spectrum of, of experiences is what makes each of us exactly who we are at this exact moment. And so, um, you know, for me, starting my business really started on Mimosa Street. In doing research for this and, and creating all of these slides, I found this and I just think that it's really what I strive to do in creating spaces for my clients. It says, develop an interest in life as you see it. The people, things, literature, music, the world is so rich, simply throbbing with rich treasures, beautiful souls, and interesting people. Forget yourself. I think that's really poignant and it makes um, winning you know, pageants and, and achieving things um, kind of a, a very slippery slope because for me, I always wanted to do for others. It really had nothing to do with me. So um, when my sister gave me the entry form for Miss Missouri Teen USA, I thought, oh, it's an experience. I'll do it because it's an experience. But for me, I hadn't fast forwarded to like, well, what if you, what if you win? You know, it, it's like a spotlight gets shown on you. And being different, it's like the last thing that, <laughs> that you want. So winning the pageant was actually a very strange um, kind of out of body experience that got, it took a lot of getting used to, but I realized that it allowed me to share my story with kids um, and with people that may need to hear what I had to share. And so it was a really amazing experience because of that. So here we are. So I graduated high school. 
I won Miss Missouri Teen USA um, before graduating. So I traveled the state of Missouri um, and then I got prepared. I was slated to go to SLU for pre-med and ended up winning uh, the Miss Teen USA pageant. So there's a video, you don't have to play it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I made history as the first winner from the state of Missouri and the third black Miss Teen USA. So from there, like Carrie said, um, it opened up a lot of opportunity for on-camera opportunities. And so I ended up moving to New York. My pageant was August 29th of 2001. So September 11th, 2001 was just a few short days later. And it really changed everything in ev all of our lives. Um, you know, the spectrum of emotion on that day is unlike any day and it just passed. I can't believe it's been 19 years, but um, to go down to ground zero and smell and see and join um, rescue and iron workers that couldn't get back home to the boroughs and were working tireless, tirelessly day and night, um, it changed the scope of my life, but also obviously uh, being Miss Teen USA, um, I, I did a lot uh, different events after 9-11. Um, and so from there, uh, I gave up my title and I got a job with MTV. So that was when VJs were a thing. I was a VJ for the College Television Network and I got to audition at the Tyrrell Studios there in Times Square. So that was pretty cool. And then uh, that stint was over and, and the starving artist identity happened. So uh, I worked at Tavern on the Green, which is a really cool restaurant in Central Park. And uh, then I moved to Chicago. So these are all of the random jobs that I had in the Windy City, um, right there, the Chicago River, um, right on Wacker Drive. So I worked there for uh, a, a time. And so that was pretty cool. But I always knew that I wanted to be in a city and just walking into building after building, you know, between the architecture and the different styles and colors. And so for what I do, I try to bring a little bit of all of these inspirations um, that I've seen and, and been a part of into design. We might be in Colombia, but I, I feel like all of what I do really is a combination of um, all of my experiences in all these places. So after Chicago, I moved to LA and um, this is a picture of Katsuya in the bottom right, which is the sushi restaurant Carrie was talking about. And, you know, it was an incredibly um, stylistic interior and to be able to, to see all of these things, this was um, designed by Philip Stark. And then um, getting into commercial property, I got to see a lot of interiors for commercial spaces. So all of these things gave me um, kind of an arsenal uh, to, to pull out from time to time on projects to, from today. Um, so it's been, it's been really cool to be able to go back and see like, oh, maybe this is why I thought I should do that. So through all of my experiences and all the cities that I lived in and all of the temp jobs as I auditioned, um, I loved making spaces better than I found them. That was the one common thread looking back. And it was what I did for people that I worked with and that I liked, um, you know, and I never asked them for money. And I, I feel like once I met my husband and I realized I didn't have to work because I needed to make ends meet, but that I could actually do something that I wanted to do, interior design was kind of the no brainer. So, it's that, you know, it's that motto. If you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And it really is true. Speaking of my husband, so when I met him, he told me how difficult it was to be a military spouse. And I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we will get through it. And we have, um, he served 10 years in the Navy. It's what brought us here. And it was the thought like, what, what can I do that makes the time away from them worth it? 
And I knew that I had to start my own business um, with the ages of my kids. And I knew that interior design would make it worth it because it's something that I've always done and I could actually turn a passion into a career. So it's my husband, Nick. Atalia is on his back. Um, Cal, our son, is in the middle. And our oldest, Clay, is to my right in the family photo. So we took these in Springfield a few years ago. They're bigger now. And it's really been a family uh, business. You know, when I started um, and I opened my actual location above American Shoe, they were there every day, you know, moving in things and helping me hang drapes. And we had Halloween -y and, and the district events. So they are very much a part of, you know, the hustle and bustle of loading and unloading product and, and stopping by clients' homes. So they get to see um, hands-on, you know, all of the hard work, but also the payoff. So this is just a few of the projects um, and organizations that I'm a part of. And in thinking back, I, I don't know how I was able to graduate, but I'm so glad I, I was. It was my goal to graduate before I turned 35. Um, that was the age my mother was when she passed away and she was in college at the time. Um, and so once I started, I just thought, okay, I have to graduate. Um, and I did everything online full time as a stay at home mom. And once I graduated, it was the best Christmas present ever. Um, and then I, I decided to start the Whitley Co. So built out my own website and did all that um, kind of the, the foundation work. And now in, in year three, it really has culminated to, to being uh, my dream job. So in going back to spectrum, you know, good design is a reflection of a life well lived and that's using light and color and texture and pattern and history and people's, um, you know, family heirlooms and family portraits. And so um, that for me sums up everything about the Whitley Co. for me um, as a designer. I want to have someone come in and feel like they know the person that lives there. If you just click one more, the rest of it will come up. It's much more than pretty things in a room. It always has been for me. Um, I will clean and rearrange, but I will pull out things out of drawers that I feel have meaning. Um, and keepsakes and images are so important, you know, when you've lost someone and And people in your life, those that I've really tried to to create um, a showcase um, in a fresh and layered way of where you are in your life, and it, it is a collection of time and travels and tales of of your journey, and so that is my ultimate goal: is to tell your story. And then I have some projects. So this is, um, you know, my hope is that you have a unique and layered design at the end of it. And we've got um, just a few images of our latest office, um, the aerial view of the textures and the colors. And then this is our first bathroom remodel. I can't believe this has been um, two years ago, but we wanted to update everything in this bathroom. And the after, I think, shows that the client, one, has impeccable taste, and two, everyone needs a soaker tub. Let's just throw that out there. Um, but it's highly collaborative. You know, the, the client chose the vanity and the flooring, and I, I nudged a little bit for the, the vintage rug and, the, you know, the decor, but what I love about what I do is that I'm able to bring, you know, a little bit to the table 
and nudge a little bit and and the finished product is always so much better than um, anyone can can really imagine so so this is my first kitchen remodel and we moved walls on this one so uh, i think it was snowing two years ago and it it took almost two years to to get there but we we did the bathroom first and so it's always really great and really rewarding for a client to come back for a second or third space in their home you know they've entrusted me uh, with with their home their their baby their you know biggest investment and so this is the before of this kitchen and yeah, eating I know cake. this house Marissa I know this <laughs> house this is too so and it was and, and everything is just, you know, it's dated and it's tired. And so my job, these are the process pictures. So the wall is down. We've opened up a closet. That'll be a really great uh, little bar nook. Um, it's just the process of it is actually the coolest part for me to see, to collaborate with the client, to get to really know them, and then to have a completion um, mm -hmm. that is so much better than than anyone ever could really dream of. So. Love it. It's just really rewarding mm -hmm. what I do. And like Courtney said, you know, I wanted to be a teacher. Um, I would l line up my stuffed animals and, and sit and have lessons. And, and for me, I get to do a little bit of that in the process, um, showing clients, you know, this cabinet style versus that cabinet style, mm -hmm. picking paint, you know, so it's so much more than just color and, and layout. I really get to know my clients. Um, so this is the bathroom. Oh yeah, that bathroom was, <laughs> I've been, it, it was the bathroom, their bathroom had um, this, this window right here. It's having a wind, it, it was like, it could just get wet and moldy and you know. It was pretty dingy, yeah. <laughs> Moisture, you know. Yeah, it looks so much better now. It's amazing. Beautiful. So now it's modern and, and chic and um, that bottom right image mm -hmm. has over 200,000 pins on Pinterest. And cool. so, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, people love this bathroom. Mm -hmm. I love that mirror, that hexagon. Yes. So this um, is a total gut. This whole house got it from top to bottom. Every surface, uh, popcorn ceilings got scraped, all the light fixtures, the paint. So this was the before and Gosh, so much this good. is the after. Yeah, it looks amazing. So and again, amazing. utilizing what we, we already had, what she already had, and then just adding to it. Mm -hmm. It's really what I love to do is mixing old and new. Um, and it all started with that emerald green tufted rolled armed couch. So yeah, this is beautiful. And some more with the kitchen, just keeping it really light and bright. And I love, again, the collaborative process. This is a basement. So this is what I walk into, you know, you walk into something and you go, okay, what what is it that they want and that's the key is to be able to listen to everything that they have on their wish list mm -hmm. and then try to figure out where all of those wish list items can go mm -hmm. and this is the after oh yeah i love the mix of this old vintage photo with that is his great grandmother and those are her her brass Asian sconces. Yeah, this is amazing. Or candlesticks, excuse yeah. me, um, next to it. And so being able to use um, family photos and heirlooms, the top left picture um, is uh, another huge family um, photograph. And it's just being able to bridge the gap between really amazing old pieces that he wanted to showcase and bringing in new things that don't feel so new. Mm -hmm. 
So this is my, this was my favorite place um, when I lived in LA. This was a picture that I took uh, sundown in on, on Venice Beach in LA. So I just um, wanted to include that. If you click one more time, and I have this on my website and. Like I I've always say, like design for me is my love language. It's what I would do if I was getting paid or not, um, as history shows. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I really want to leave the space, but also try to, to leave the, the people around me um, feeling mm -hmm. um, that they've grown in some way. Um, and so that really is the ultimate goal for what I do. It really has very little to do with design and more about finding that common ground with someone and, and honoring the journey that they've been on in their life and, and showcasing that. Are those all the slides, Marissa? I think there's um, maybe one more. Okay. Oh yeah. A few Ooh. more. This is the last um, project that I just got photographed. So the before is to the right, beautiful things, cool ceiling detail, and with some paint, a, a decor update, uh, this is the after. Yeah, it's just those little things, you know, those like little differences that really mm -hmm. did go a long way here. It's really beautiful. We've updated lighting and the client has added wallpaper. So that's, that's mm -hmm. been a really nice um, addition to that office space. And this is the last slide. I hear you with the Kanye. <laughs> I don't know how to make it stop. <laughs> it's, it, it'll go. Here it is. Uh, that's great. I didn't know you could put music into these presentations. That's like a new thing for me. <laughs> I know. That's what I was saying. I think I bit off more than I can chew. <laughs> Um, Marissa, it's, as a person who wants to be you, like, I just want to be, like, not you, but, like, doing what you're doing and kind of living what you're doing, um, it is certainly, like, my absolute dream job and a realistic and a, um, maybe, like, a dream sort of way is to, yeah, design people's spaces. Aesthetics matter a great deal to me as a person, so I really care a lot about where things go and how things are curated, like, if that matters a lot to me. So I'm kind of curious um, about, like, when you're starting a business, it's, it's certainly always a risk to start a small business, but I guess I'm curious did, about how you got people to trust you to do their spaces? Like, did you have a lot of, uh, like, previous work or, I feel like if you don't have a portfolio to show, it's like, just trust me, like, I know what I'm doing. I'm just really curious about that part of the process as, um, as if, as a woman, too, just as a female business owner, it's like, sometimes it's just different experience when you're trying mm -hmm. to gain trust. So I'm really curious about that in general. And then feel free, anyone else, if you have any questions to pop them in the chat or raise your hand and, and feel free to ask them. But that's my kind of first question for you. Well, what's crazy is when I lived in LA, um, I did uh, a total update on shelving and I included the pictures on Facebook in an album called The Whitley Co. And so years prior, it was already part of what I did. And so I didn't have those. I had erased the album long before January 2017, but it was always there. And so I think if it's something that you love to do, your passion um, kind of oozes out when you are talking with someone. And so for me, my first um, job was with my parents as teachers guru, I call her. She was going out of town and I said, look, I just graduated and I need pictures for my website that I'm creating. And she trusted me because we had that rapport and that relationship. She had worked with my kids um, for some months. And so I think if you just believe in yourself, that comes across mm -hmm. and then the rest has just kind of snowballed by word of mouth. But it is. It's one of those. I think that's why I put so much pressure on myself is because it is a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to deliver. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pressure to um, have people enter a home um, in and out, you know, during 
uh, the winter months and with animals and, and, and children and all of these things and now COVID, I mean, it's just really taken it to even a, a higher uh, degree of responsibility. But I think if you, if you show them that you're willing to walk alongside them during the process, that's really a lot, you know, 85% of it. Mm -hmm. um, the styling, they don't know until I've done it. So mm -hmm. they, they, you build that rapport and you build that trust. And it's sa the same as, you know, my neighbors, when I knocked on their door mm -hmm. with my fundraising, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't, they didn't want to buy anything but you you let them know that this is something that means something to you and that you can be trusted and that this the styling and and the design at the end is is really the the icing on the cake but yeah. it's all been word of mouth and the community has been really supportive of my business mm -hmm. i knew it was going to be a risk but i hadn't worked in six years i was a stay-at-home mom and as a worker bee it was like i was chomping at the bit to get started so if that meant doing projects for free to get portfolio pictures i was happy to do that i'd, I'd done that my whole life mm -hmm. well if you're ever looking to expand your business and you need an extra person if it grows so big and you're like i don't know what to do with all this business <laughs> you <need a> call. <laughs> i'm you gonna get stop you like I'm going to come shadow you and I'm not going to steal your business. Oh, I would love that. I want to be a part of your business. Like I would love that. Don't tell Alyssa that she's my boss. <laughs> um, no, that would be wonderful. I need, I need about five of me at this point yeah. with COVID. I mean, one industry that's benefited is an interior designer. People at this are point. tired of their space and want an update. So I've, I live in an yes. apartment and I've like just done little things here and there that I can do that won't destroy the <laughs> building. The paint but, it back. That was my favorite. Paint it back white. Oh yeah. I know. I painted that <laughs> wall and I wasn't supposed to, but it was April and I was bored. So it got painted. <laughs> um, so Carrie asked a question in the chat. She said, what suggestions would you have for a non-interior designer to do a quick refresh on a space? What should someone look at when it comes to color and light? So I, my mom asked me this question a lot too, because she has like no visual like skills whatsoever. It's like, I don't know what to do, but I don't, I can't really afford to pay somebody. What are some like basic tips for folks who maybe aren't, you know, you know, skilled at doing interior design? Well, I think a can of paint is your best friend. Mm -hmm. um, picking a color might be difficult, but I think they've got, they've got it down to a science where you can get samples and, and try a swatch and they actually have the the pages that you can put on your space so you can see it day and night with your lighting, but um, lighting updates, um, if you have an electrician that can swap out an, a dated uh, ceiling fan or flush mount, I mean, I think lighting and paint are the two keys. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have any color, simply adding color somewhere, whether that be uh, throw pillows or a rug, mm -hmm. Tuesday morning is wonderful for that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I tend to want more color just in my spaces. Mm -hmm. it, it translates and you have a psychological and an emotional connection um, to a space. And so why not make it as, as bright and beautiful and colorful as you can? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Does anyone else have any questions? No, we're like right at time. So I wanna honor everyone's um, schedules today. Any other questions for Marissa? Anyone? Marissa, I know you mentioned Tuesday morning, but do you have any other go to retailers or spots, maybe antique malls or, or places that you source items? Yes. So I absolutely love Artichoke Annie's and Veranda, Midway. I frequent those whether I need to go there or not. <laughs> um, and things, you know, get housed and stored for projects. And it's amazing that I might have it for a year or two, but then I find the perfect home for them. Um, my favorite store is Anthropology. Um, it's my splurge spot uh, for candles. And I just got a, a bathroom remodel photographed with a, an amazing navy blue Jaguar uh, shower curtain that was a splurge. But I think there's always one piece that you can splurge on, but the rest I love. I love the antique mall circuit here. It's really great. And garage sales, mm -hmm. pre-COVID. 
That's awesome. I have one last question for you. And it's just like, how can we best support you as a community? I know that um, COVID has kind of maybe increased your business, but is there anything that we can do just to support you if you've got um, like events coming up or if you're doing webinars or if you're doing, how can we help get the word out? I know that it's a small town and everybody kind of knows everyone, but I always want to figure out ways that our just creative mornings community can support you, whether that's on social or if we can help attend something. Is there anything we can do for you? And if you don't know now, feel free to let us know later, but just want to find out how we can best um, come behind you and support your business. I mean, for me, I feel like I'm supported. Um, you know, a lot of my business has changed because of COVID. So I, I'm doing e-design. Uh, you can purchase a room design and, and we never actually have to meet. Um, you get shoppable links. You get to do a little bit of the DIY with uh, measuring cool. your own space and sending me photographs. So again, it's highly collaborative, but then I can take the lead and send you um, exactly, exactly what you need. But I think moving forward, it would just be kind of creating um, that word of mouth, um, which I feel like I have. I've. Is that e-design thing something you were doing prior to COVID or did you just adapt? Okay, so you were already it was like... Something, yeah, I had done um, research and I knew that that was a lot of interior designers, 100% of their business was e-design. And so um, I, I learned a new program that does the... the 3D renderings so to where you can better visualize it. Mm -hmm. I just need your space measurements. Um, and, but to, to be perfectly honest, COVID really kind of made me adapt in that, in that realm to learning that. Awesome. It's, I'm glad that you're able to survive. I know so many small businesses have it, but I'm really glad to know that you're thriving and doing well. I've seen a few friends' um, spaces that you've done, and I was like, who did this? This is amazing. So whenever I got the chance to meet you, I was really excited about it. So I don't know that anyone else in town is like quite doing what you're doing, which I think is cool. You've kind of carved out a space for yourself that I genuinely am excited for, and I genuinely do want to be a part of whatever you're doing. So if you hear from me in the near future, it's because I'm literally just want to like shadow you and do whatever you're doing. Um, yeah. um, so really do appreciate you being here with us today. Um, it's always a pleasure. So if there's anything we can do for you beyond today, please let us know. But um, everyone, thank Marissa for being here and for being a part of what we're doing. Um, I don't have anything else for everyone. The events for next month are coming up soon. I also, just as a note, I'm going to talk with the team about this too, but I'm talking with our um, global team. I think everyone's experiencing a little bit of Zoom fatigue and these events are really um, exciting and they're powerful for a lot of people, but we may take a hiatus at some point for a month or two um, just for some brain space. Space. I think I could use that um, and the holidays are coming up so um, stay tuned for maybe something else that we're doing I've got some ideas around um, you know maybe a, an evening event that we could do so anyhow just stay tuned for um, any updates but other than that guys have a happy Friday I'm so glad it's the weekend uh, pleasure seeing all of you and we'll see you next month thank you bye